Hi chaps! Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on turtles. Now, I have written and rewritten this tutorial almost a dozen times now trying to think the best way to apply the principles of, that underpin turtles in a meaningful way in the computer craft world. Uh, what was initially just a really simple tutorial on basic turtle function is now much more focused on robotic theory. So we're going to be talking about autonomy and intelligence today just as much as about how turtles move. Now, um, the program decided to teach us how to make is how to build a tunnel, a tunnel building robot here, and you can just sort of see this is essentially what we're going to want to build once um, he's finished, and so this is roughly how he'll behave. Now, it looks like it's a fairly basic thing that just moves forwards and backwards and places bits and pieces of glass here and there, but he's actually a lot smarter than that, and we'll use the landscape and the environment to actually sort of determine how the tunnel will eventually function and how it'll be built, so um, he's not being sort of stupid here, he's sort of being as intelligent as possible, so... In any event, um, that's roughly how it'll function, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so, if you haven't already, just um, download the world file from the description up in, the, in um, the top of the video here, and then just put it into your Minecraft directory and fire it up. Um, and once you've done that, just head over to this section here, here, where the tunnel crafting tutorial is, and I, want you to, I just want you to um, open up this program here called Tracker and run that here. All right. So essentially, um, the idea is that we want this turtle to build a path, and it will build the path by itself um, all the way from one end to, of this area to the other. Of course, you're free to however you want to, and I recommend making like a bit of a squiggly path, you know, so up to the mountains or underwater, wherever you really want to. It's entirely up to you in that sort of case here as well. So I'm just going to make a move forward for about 15 squares. I'm going to turn uh, left, move 10, then right 10, right again, then 20, then left 10, then left 10. Right, and continue. That should do the trick. Alright, now he'll just place blocks as he wants to. Okay, now I want you to watch this robot as he operates and how he moves. So, um, even though this is just a fairly standard sort of path building robot, he's actually not functioning in like a typical way for a, a typical robot. Um, when building turtles like this, it's very tempting to just make code like turtle.up, turtle.left, turtle place down, stuff like that, and that would make things very nice and easy for us as well. But you can see this one's being a little bit smarter about it as well. So you can see that he's actually following the contours of the land and building over these sort of mounds of dirt and sand and stuff, but at the same time, he's digging his way through things like um, grass and stuff like that as well. You know, he's not afraid to dig through that, so he's actually using a degree of intelligence the way that he moves, and this is roughly what I want to get onto about this concept of autonomy. So the idea is that this robot is operating um, autonomously, and that is, say, external of human control. We don't have to clear the path for him, we don't have to get these weeds out of the way and stuff like that. We provide him with everything that he needs to be able to turn what he needs to move here, things that he can dig through, and things that he can place, and the rest of it's entirely up to him, and he will handle as he sees fit. Now, once he runs out of materials, which is fairly soon, then there'll be issues to worry about. For the second here, you can see he'll move very rough. So you can f continue to watch him see how he moves, but the second now, I'm actually going to focus directly on getting started. So, um, this path here, the stone path that we're actually laying here, this is going to be the outline that's going to follow where the tunnel's going to start with. So it's going to start from this point here, and it's going to follow this path along. And the turtle should be able to follow this and use this path to determine where the tunnel should be placed. It shouldn't stray from this, it should follow it directly, including up hills, underwater, through contours, anything that you can imagine the turtle's going to need to, have to handle that. And that's because this is part of the idea of robots being able to sort of operate on their own. If we create programs that are just very simple and basic and just use like standard series of commands, it means they operate much like a computer program. But the thing is that the thing about robotics, the thing to remember in the robotic world, is that Computer programs aren't simply, you know, for things like robots, um, they aren't simply sort of computer programs because there are environments to worry about. There are things like light levels, there's, um, you know, there's altitude changes, there's water, there are blockades, blockages and things like that. There are all sorts of things they have to worry about and so the turtle has to know how to respond to those and, and handle those. And that's the principle of robotics that we're going to be dealing with in this sort of particular tutorial today. So anyway, we're doing it in two parts. And the first part is just going to make him follow a simple path. The idea is we want to get this robot so to be able to move down this path here, travelling along it and then essentially be able to get to the end once he reaches the very end of it. And then once we've got that, it's another matter to just be able to make it so that as he goes along, he has to place paths as he goes along, and that's roughly what the, the, the crux of the tutorial is going to be about. So anyway, just open the turtle here. You can see that he's currently got an empty inventory, um, which is no good. We actually fill him with a bit of stuff. So what we're going to need is we're going to need a single block of cobblestone. And this block of cobblestone will be used to essentially determine what the path is. So everything that's cobblestone is considered to be a path, everything else is considered to be environment. So we need that for our comparisons a little bit later down the track. If you're not familiar with turtles before now, that's cool. Just go help turtle. Uh, sorry, help 
turtle, and this will give you essentially everything you need to know about how to run the turtle. So we've got the forwards, backwards, ups, down, turning left, turning right. These are all the basic movement functions that the turtle can use. He can also select a slot number. This inventory here is his inventory, so it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so the slot number 1, obviously, is the one we're going to be selecting, so the one we're going to be working with. You can also check to see how much space he has left on a particular area, um, and how many items he has in that particular area as well by checking the slot number. That's cool as well. Uh, he can dig in all three directions, um, which is fine. He can also place in all three directions, which is good too. And he can detect in all three directions. If there's anything, when he calls detect, he'll check forwards, upwards, and down. And if anything is in there, he'll return true. Otherwise, he'll return false. So we can use that for our basic sensors. Of course, real robots um, use much wider things like you know lidar and stuff. We have to produce maps. So when we talk about pathfinding with real robots, we talk about things like the A star algorithm. But of course, the robots here aren't quite sophisticated enough for that. So we're just going to use basic detections for that. Um, our comparison. This is what we're going to be using for checking the path. So a compare is going to be able to compare the space um, that the turtle is looking at here, so forward, upwards, down, with the block it's selected. And if it's the same block, then it'll return true. Otherwise, it'll return false. And then finally, of course, dropping things. So that's very basic. That's how turtles work. Very simple than that. So I'm just going to go CD disk here. I'm just going to edit. I'm going to call this tunnel. So this is going to be the start of our tunnel program. And this is what we're going to be working on to basics. So let's think very much about how we're going to be starting here. So essentially, we want our turtle to be able to move forward so long as there is a space beneath him that has cobblestone. And that's really easy to do. So we're going to start with that and we can sort of keep modifying him as we go along. So what we're going to do is we're going to go um, while. We're going to create a new function. So function, uh, let's call it follow path. Like that, okay. And then we'll just have something down here like this. While follow path, do and like that. So let's make an infinite loop that follows as long as follow path returns true. Just add the brackets there as well. Hopefully you're following along with me okay. Alright, so um, essentially this m method should return true or false. If it's true, then it means that uh, we can keep following the path. False means that there's no path left to follow. That's what that's going to mean. So um, this is very simple. We're just going to go turtle.forward, say I want to move forward one step, and then if turtle dot compare down, so the block directly beneath him is failed, so that means we're going to go if not turtle dot down, then return false end, that's very easy, and then otherwise it's going to return true end, return true and that should be fine, okay. That's it, that's all there is to it. So that should be able to make our turtle move forward, and he'll just check to make sure that he can move forward, otherwise he'll just stop eventually, so let's just move with that, so we're just going to go tunnel and let's see what happens. Perfect. So he just kept following that path along. Once he reached this point, then he's going to stop. And that's exactly what we're after here as well. So, now, that's really good. All good and well and stuff like that. But unfortunately, this doesn't really help us at all if the turtle needs to hit a corner in the edge there as well. So we're going to start adding cornering to our turtle algorithm here. So let's do that next. So I'm going to grab our turtle here. Make sure you have that block there. Don't forget to add that block. That Otherwise, that really does ruin everything. A disk, edit, tunnel. All right. So now, if our turtle lock compared down has failed, then we're going to try turning left. So I'm going to actually remove this here. And we're going to go turtle dots. So we're actually going to go turtle dot back like that, just make him move back onto the space he was beforehand. Then we're going to go turtle dot turn left, see if the left is going to work for us. And then we're going to go turtle dot forward again. All right. And then, if not turtle dot compare down, then. Turn false. So then we know that if the left turn has failed, then we know it's wrong. But that's not really good enough either, because what about if we need to make a right turn? We need to add a third case here, and that's going to be for our right turns. Then we're going to try this. So we're going to go turtle dot back, turtle dot turn left, turtle dot turn left, and then we're going to go turtle dot forward. All right. So imagine we've done this. So what we've essentially done, we've gone here. We've said, okay, this is wrong. So I want to go back turn left, let's try it this way, left, assume this has failed, if that's the case, we're going to get turn, move back again, turn around, and move forward here again, that's all very good and well, so we're looking pretty good so far, which is great, so now that we've done that, we're just going to go turn lot forward, and now that's all been done, we can check one final time, and of course, if this has failed, if not, turtle lot compare down, and finally, we can return false. And we can just end there as well. That'll end there, and then it'll just return true in all other instances. Assume that if any other case that's not been the case, then we know that we've gotten there successfully and we can keep moving. So, now we've done that, we can just go tunnel and see what happens. So he's failed that, he's going to turn left, beautiful. Now it's failed that, it's going to try turning left. Aha, now this is a problem. It's come there, and we've hit an infinite loop at this point, so where it still thinks we can keep moving forward, but at the same time, we can't because this is blockade in the way. It's not checking for blockages, so we need to start checking for those too. That's where we're going to hit a bit of a snag. So what we're going to do now, move this up. So what happens when we hit a blockade? 
Well, essentially, we know that it might be possible that we can hit a wall like this where we can climb up on top of it. So let's just give that a try. We're actually going to add a bit more stone here for our testing our blocks, like that. There we go, that'll be good. So in this instance here, essentially, if we hit a block, we want to know if we can move above it. So what we're going to do now is you can see we've used turtle lock forward. That's no longer adequate. This turtle lock forward function here, this is not going to do the trick because we need to be able to check to see if things are in front of us and beneath us as well. So we're actually going to replace all of that. We're going to create a new function here. We're going to go function move forward. And this also is going to return true or false to see whether or not we can actually move forward or, or not. So what we're going to do first off is going to go um, if not turtle dot forward. So in that instance here, let's suppose we've hit this situation, we've moved forward and we've hit this wall. Now, remember, if turtle dot forward fails, that is to say it can't move forward, it'll return false. So if that has happened, if not turtle dot forward, then we can start thinking about trying to move up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go turtle, turtle dot up, like that. Now we should be able to move turtle dot forward. Is that going to do the trick? Probably not. Why? Because we hit the situation here where we've gotten this thing here as well, and that might still be in the way. There might still something be there. So, but the thing is that once we've reached this point here, we could certainly go and say, alright, let's try the second piece up there, but at this point, the rail isn't going to work. It's too high now for a railway piece to be connected. So as a consequence, that's where we have to say, alright, this is where we draw the line. So if this has failed, then we know that we just can't move forward. So, if not turtle.forward, so we fail a second time, then we're going to bring it back to the ground. Let's remember, when you're working with turtles, particularly when it comes to pathing, always make sure you return the turtle to the same state as it was beforehand when you've done the move. So we're going to go turtle.down, so he's back to the same altitude he was beforehand, and then we're just going to return false. That includes orientation as well, so make sure that everything is always consistent, because otherwise that can cause real problems. Now, otherwise, if that's gone true, that means he's gone up and he stepped forward successfully. Now, that's all okay for if he's moved up, but what happens if he moves across and there's still something beneath him? Staying at that high altitude isn't going to work, because if he compares down, he'll see nothing and he'll think there's no path there, but there is a path there right beneath him. How do we solve that? Very easy. Let's go back here. So now we have to see whether or not there's anything beneath him. So what we're going to do now... Uh, are we missing an end there? Because it looks like we are, and we are. There we go. So we're going to go, if not turtle.detect down, then turtle dot down. Alright, so now we know there's something beneath him. But what happens if there's still a space beneath him, like this? Then we know that he's gone off a cliff or something. Again, the path cannot build a, a, a track there, so unfortunately that's also a foul case. We're going to do the same thing exactly there as well, Hans. So just like before, if not turtle detect down, then turtle dot up Turtle dot back. Remember, returning him to his previous state, and then we're going to return false here as well. Excellent. And otherwise, we know he's hit the ground. We know we're okay, and we're safe. Now we've hit that okay, and now we can just end that end there as well. And now we've got a fairly good system here working. Now we're going to have to use this for all instances where we've moved forward. So this turtle dot forward stuff has got to go, and it has to be replaced with move forward. I'm almost to the point where I'd recommend that you do this in the external editor because this is going to get quite long, I expect. Same thing here as well beforehand. I'm going to go move forward here too. Excellent. And that should really do the trick. But is that enough? And I'm still inclined to say no, because what happens in this situation here, you can see with the compare down, suppose we fail to move forward. In this instance here, we've tried to move forward. We've hit that. He's going to move back down to the state. Compare down is going to return true. He's going to still think that he can keep moving forward, even though there's something in the way. We have to use the state of the move forward method to tell us that's gone wrong as well. So at this point here, we're going to have to return true to make sure that was let him know that's go, so we're going to return true here, and we have to make sure the application is testing to see whether or not this moved forward correctly. So we're going to add a new variable. So we're going to go local moved is equal to this. Now, if not compared down or not moved, so in that case he didn't, he failed to move as well, then we know that forward path is blocked beyond movement. Either there's a gap there or there's something in the way there, so in that case we have to make sure that's gone incorrectly. So that's okay. This turtle dot back, again, not going to do the trick. This is not good enough because at this point, then he might be in a different castle. No, wait, hold on. Wait a second. No, 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 no. This is okay, because if he's going to be moved back to that position, we've made sure our move forward doesn't have to move him backwards. We know he's okay there, but we have to check to make sure that space is actually clear or not, because it might be that the turtle compared down has failed as well. So, in this situation here, look at see whether or not he's moved. If he's moved forward, then we have to make sure that we move him back again. That's really important. So what we're going to do now is actually going to go... Turtle lot... Uh, turn left... Turtle lot turn left. Now he's making sure that we're turning in the wrong direction. We have to change this to right, of course, because now we're facing the wrong way. Now, 
if not moved, sorry, rather, if moved, if he did move, we have to make sure we move him forward again. But again, it might be an altitude change. We have to use this method here, this move forward thing here. So, if moved, then move forward. And then we can change him back to right way as well. Otherwise, it'll just be two turns on the spot and one way to the left. So that way, think about it. In this situation here, it'll be facing from here, turn left, turn left, turn right. That's no good either, is it? No, because we're going to go here, so we're going to be facing that way. Turn left, turn left, and then turn right. All right, that's if we're going from the straight ways. So if there's a wall here, okay, let's make sure we get this right, because we have to get it right. Um, hit forward, can't move there. So we're going to turn left, we're going to turn left, and then we're going to turn right. Now it's facing to our left. Perfect. Okay, so we are going to be turning to our leftmost side, which is exactly what we want there as well. Forehand. If, however, we've moved forward and there's nothing here, we're going to go turn left, we're going to turn left, then move forwards, then turn right. That's what we want. Okay, so that's that sounding exactly right. So I think we've got that correct. We may have to debug that a little bit around down the track, see if there's any untoward behavior. This is the process of, of making turtles work, of course. Now, we have to set moved here as well, because that could be the same case here. So moved could be equal to move forward. So following me from here, if compared down or not moved, again, wasn't able to move to the left. That's And this is exactly what's going to happen in this case here. We failed to move. Then we have to make sure that we turn around, so this turtle dot back, again, not going to cut it. Turtle dot left, turn left, turtle dot turn left here. Now we have two turn lefts here as well, but we're already facing backwards, oh, sorry, we didn't actually need to type that out, we can just change here. So we can go if not, sorry, if moved, then move forward. And so moves forward if that case he turned otherwise. But otherwise, it's just one move as opposed to two, which is fine. And then same thing here, because we know that those move forwards have, have succeeded because they were the same that they worked last time. Moved is equal to this. And one last time, I'm going to check here if we're blocked into a nice big hole or not moved. Then, and that's when we can say, okay, this has failed. However, at this point, I would be almost inclined to use that same fact here before. But for the second, let's just see how this is working. So. Alright, so now we have a fairly cohesive program. It's handling forwards, backwards, left, and right. So now we're just going to try a tunnel and see what happens. It's always a good idea to test these things as much as you can. So you can see that the forward thing, that's working really nice. So let's see what happens when he hits this corner. So he's going to go left. He's failed that. He's going to try on the right here. He's checking up. And that's perfect. Look at that. So that's fantastic. You can see here that he's now moving up, down, left, and right beautifully. And he's stopping when he hits that point that it's failed. Now, I'm almost inclined to make him go back to the position he was beforehand. So let's actually do that. So what we're going to do, first off, we're going to clear away this path and test it on the real pathing. And then we're just going to add a very simple like procedure to check to make sure that he can t turn back the way that he was when he started. So we're going to go here. Okay, and we're going to go city disk here. Edit tunnel. All right. So in the event that this has failed... Um, that we've gone the wrong direction. Alright, so what do we want to do? Go turtle dot turn left. Same thing again, we're going to turn him backwards 180 degrees. You might even want to turn that into a, a different function, turn 180 or something like that, which would just do this automatically. And then, we're going to go move forward, which is great. That's got the same method there we had before, and we know that'll succeed. Now he's facing to the left, so we're assuming that he's on the right hand side, he's failed there. Now we want to make him turn right to face forwards again. And that would have everything finish up nicely. Turtle dot turn right. Okay, and that really should do it. So now that we've got that working nicely, let's just go tunnel and see what happens. So this will be using the original path. So he's going to forward, he's going to fail there, so now he's going to try to his left. And that's succeeded nicely. Now he's going to try moving up here. He's failed there. He can't move up, so now he's going to turn to his right. He's going to move up there. Beautiful, working very nicely. Checking here, he's going to check his right there. You can see now he's actually following the path beautifully. And this is where I want you to sort of focus on that idea of aut autonomy. Um, he's now being able to move on his own without, you know, with independently. We don't have to tell him where to move, we don't have to give him instructions. The turtle will actually follow the path on his own. And that's the thing I really want you to take back from this tutorial. This is the idea of a turtle functioning on his own volition without any sort of control, any movement from any other people there as well. That's a pathing robot. Alright, so now you can see that we've got him moving, following that path really nicely. It's just a matter of now teaching him how to place things. Um, beautiful. Now it's just a matter of, yeah, once we've got him, the idea of him being able to place objects and places things all around him, then we can get a really nice sort of function of how a turtle's going to look. So, alright, that's the end of the first part of the tutorial. Um, hope you followed that okay. We'll start on the next part very, very soon. So, thanks for watching.